Well, this could be an insanely rocky few days for crypto as the presidential election kind of winds. Well, actually, it's going to uh, speed up and then kind of wind down. Um, we're looking at the presidential election in the United States on Tuesday, this Tuesday coming. And uh, things right now are getting a little bit um, volatile, in my opinion. So we're going to talk about that in this video, what this uh, election could mean for crypto. And uh, let's get into it in this video. Make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, so we can see here Trump's lead over Harris on Polymart has weakened a bit as Bitcoin dropped to 68K. It actually dropped into the 67K range. Um, but Polymart data shows that Donald Trump's lead over Kamala Harris has weakened, but he still remains a bit dominant. Odds have declined from 66.9% down to 54% in favor of Donald Trump. Um, it, uh, Kamala Harris has seen a substantial increase in her chances, rising from 33.5% to about 46.1%. Election day is on November 5th, and it is fast approaching. So, you know, it is very important, you guys, to get out there. And I'm not telling anybody what, who to vote for, or, you know, this that's not what this video is about. This video is about... Um, exercising your right to vote and the impact it can have on cryptocurrency. So make sure you guys get out there, cast your ballot, because really this race could be really anyone's, uh, you know, victory here. So um, poly market is uh, pretty interesting. I, I checked into it today. There's a ton of different things on there that uh, people can, can bet on. And uh, there's a ton of different uh, sectors and things you can bet on as well. It comes down to even, you know, not for, not just elections, it can, it's cryptocurrency. There's, um, you know, things that are happening in the world that you can bet on. And it's pretty interesting. It's actually kind of cool to us uh, to see. It's built on the Ethereum blockchain. This video is not sponsored by Polymer. I'm just saying that I was looking into it because a lot of people seem to uh, to talk about it. And I thought it was kind of interesting to, uh, to to go on and take a look at all the different things that they had on Polymer's website. It allows users to buy and sell shares in different real world outcomes by betting a stable coin like USDC rather than more volatile cryptocurrencies. And a polymer gambler known as Theo is wagering more than $30 million on a Trump victory. So the I checked the odds of that were, I think it was 80, 80 points or something. So if you bet like, if you bet hundred bucks, you could win like 180 if Trump becomes president. So that's what it was earlier when I checked into it. Um, obviously it can update as things uh, kind of progress. Iowa. So Iowa poll Eps and Epstein tapes are uh, a thing that is uh, basically going around today. According to Ann Seltzer, which is a prominent American pollster, no, uh, pollster known for being highly accurate, Harris leads Trump in Iowa by three percentage points. We know swing states are very, uh, very important right now because, you know, uh, you know, typically, you know, Democrats and Republicans have certain states that they, uh, they they normally have support for and they win. And we know that those are likely to uh, to be winners or losers. And uh, so it really comes down to the states that kind of can can sway back and forth and, and they can be really prominent for one candidate or the other. Um, that's where most of them have been campaign, campaign, campaigning lately because they are trying to win the votes there because they're very important uh, states to uh, to basically grasp hold of. Um, so the Daily Beast recently published recordings from interviews uh, author Michael, Michael Wolf conducted in 2017 with convicted sex trafficker Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein. So uh, he talked about in his videos, a decade long friendship with Trump. This is not something new. They're going to come out with these things um, to try and blast each other um, right before the election to try and swing uh, people that are on the fence. Right. If people are on the fence and they. Uh, they're basically taking in all this information that's happening right until the last minute until they vote and uh, things like this that they're, they're, they're coming out with and trying to basically sway people's decisions. I'm saying this is not something new. We knew that Jeffrey Epstein and um, Donald Trump had had a relationship years ago. Uh, Trump has come out and talked about that. This is not something that is new. And and quite frankly, seeing it breaking on X is uh, it, it's very misleading. It's not something that we, uh, the, the tapes are new, but Donald Trump has already talked about this. Um, we also have um, the crypto stances. So Trump and Harris have very crypto stances. So this is something that is important to you. It's not important to everybody, but it is important to a lot of people, obviously, that are watching this video because you're in crypto. Trump has emerged as a vocal supporter of crypto. Trump's campaign decision to accept crypto donations further strengthens its uh, uh, pro-crypto stance. Harris's approach in September, she initiate, uh, indicated that her administration would support crypto as part of a broader strategy to enhance economic competitiveness. But really, she hasn't gone into detail as to how she would uh, you know, basically promote that or you know, be in favor of using crypto and things like that. Her statements have been less definitive than Trump's explicit endorsements. Uh, Ripple XRP co-founder co Chris Larson donated over $11.8 million to her campaign, and he says that he told uh, CNBC 
that he believes the Democratic candidate will take a completely different approach to crypto than President Joe Biden, who has been criticized for picking Gary Gensler to chair the U.S. SEC. Will, you know, I've also heard, and I don't know if it's true, obviously we're hearing a lot of rumors lately, that she would pick uh, Gary Gensler to be the treasurer. So, um, you know, really one half doesn't one do another, right? Like it's, it, you know, it just really depends on what happens there, but she hasn't really come out and say if that's true or not. I actually, I think, I, I don't think she said it's true. I, I honestly have no idea if that's true or not. It could be just a rumor, like a many other things that are circulating out there right now. But um, the polymark predictions continue to show volatility. Bitcoin dropped under 68K, actually 67 and a half or 67.3 but it managed to climb back up above 68K. So we go over and we'll take a look at this tab here. Um, we're sitting at 69.1 as of right now. So thing, you know, you can see, you can see the fluctuations in price here. Um, you know, this is just over the day. This is a one day chart. So, I mean, this thing was down 67. Um, obviously, you know, we're bouncing around up and down here. But you can see, you see the volatility that's come out in the last few days. It's just, uh, you know, it doesn't really know what, where it's going to go here. So I think, you know, it, a lot of uh, Bitcoin's volatility is either going to increase or decrease depending on the outcome of this election, because obviously we know uh, President Trump is a little bit more in favor of crypto. I'm not telling people to vote for either or. Obviously, that's your decision. But, uh, you know, the next couple of days is going to be very critical, in my opinion. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, we'll keep tabs on it. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, you can't really, you know, predict the outcome of these things, but uh, you can definitely darn try. And, you uh, you know, just make sure you guys get out there and vote. That's a very, very important thing to do right now, especially where things are so tight. And uh, really, everybody's vote here counts. And I would say that for any election, for any, you know, I'm in Canada. I can't vote for the United States election, but I can just say that, you know, we're all in this together. Your economy affects my economy, my economy some, sometimes affects your economy and uh, so forth. So we'll see what happens here. And uh, it's something, you know, got to pay attention to. So thanks for tuning in. Catch you guys in the next one.